In this chapter, we will discuss histology and segmentation. Histology imaging involves tissue samples which have been sliced and imaged using a microscope. Typically, whole slide imaging is where an entire slide is imaged by stitching together multiple smaller images obtained while moving the microscope objective over the entire slide at a high magnification. Different types of stains will color the tissue in different ways. A major task in this area is segmenting cancerous tissue given an entire slide using standard H&E staining. Some stains can be very expensive, like the ones that bind to a specific receptor to detect specific cancers. So pathologists prefer to avoid using them over an entire slide. In the example here, you can see the resolution of these images is very large. The segmented area is verified using a stain that highlights this cancer. Let's look at the use case of breast cancer segmentation. A basic approach is to convert the problem to classification. The image can be segmented by hand and then fixed resolution patches can be created and each assigned a label. Each fixed size patch can then be extracted and used to train a model. Because all the patches are the same resolution, they can be combined into batches for faster training. Dealing with the class imbalance problem here is simple because patches can be sampled so that they are balanced in every batch. An excellent property of this approach is the resulting model can be applied efficiently to any size input using fully convolutional processing. Fully convolutional processing is the idea of minimizing redundant computations when overlapping image patches are processed. In this example, we have a small network which takes an input vector of length 4 and produces an output of length 1. When we extend the input vector by 1, this results in an output of size 2. In effect, we process two samples with input size 4. Because their computations overlapped, we are able to reuse the computations from the first input on the second input. With this approach, it is important to know a model's receptive field, because this is the minimum sized input that can be processed. Also, this is the input space which the prediction is made from. So all relevant information to make a prediction must be contained inside this region. Training this model with inputs of size 4 can then easily be used to process larger inputs. This approach allows for very fast processing of large images, but requires the model to be constructed to avoid operations that cannot share computations. In this example, with code provided at the link below, a small CNN is trained patchwise and used to process this full histology slide. The network has two output channels corresponding to two classes, which could be extended for more. A binary segmentation can be obtained by comparing which class prediction is higher. The network could also have been constructed with a single sigmoid output instead, but using multiple output channels more easily extends to higher numbers of classes. Instead of using downsampling, one could reduce the input into a small representation using regular convolutions or pooling, and then upsample this representation into the original image size. The same principles of fully convolutional processing and receptive fields apply. If you want to segment a particular type of cell, the receptive field needs to contain enough information of the cell to make a determination. Even if your input image is large, it could still have too small a receptive field. One trick to find the receptive field is to process smaller and smaller images until you get a shape error. The UNET approach builds on the use of a bottleneck and upsampling to include skip connections, similar to what's used in a ResNet, which preserve spatial information and improve segmentation alignment. The idea of the bottleneck here is that it has the largest receptive field and can form a high-level representation. When performing image-to-image -image segmentation, the losses are very important. Here we just look at the binary case. You may have heard of these many different metrics before, but here they are all written with a similar construction for clarity. The main difference is how to value a mistake and which class is more important. In this form, however, it is hard to use them as a training loss because everything is discrete. Using the dot product between ground truth predictions and output probabilities 
allows us to have a differentiable dice loss. This can be extended to a multi-class problem by taking the average dice over all classes. In this setup, p is a binary vector representing the ground truth label for each pixel, and p hat is an output probability between 0 and 1, which can be enforced using either a sigmoid in the binary case or a softmax over all classes for each pixel in the multi-class case. One trick when the edges of a segmentation are important is to predict them as an independent output or a third class. In this use case, we would like to predict a cortex from brain histology, which has folds that are important to capture in the resulting segmentation. Instead of just predicting the segmentation target, another output is predicted and trained to be a binary map of the edges. This forces the network to learn a special representation for edges that will make it easier for the segmentation output to predict gaps between folds. Another challenge to face is extreme class imbalance, such as when trying to segment lung nodules. There can be so many different types of negative patches that a model may forget what it has already learned because it hasn't seen that type of patch just by random chance in the training process. One solution is an idea called CASED. The idea is to store a probability for each image patch, which is used to sample patches for each training batch. The probabilities are calculated by evaluating the current model on all patches and taking the inverse of performance normalized. This can be very computationally expensive to compute, but the benefit is that your training batches are more informative. 